Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. Today what I want to show you guys is how we apply a BMI product to something cut up. And I was rambling on for about five minutes doing this and Jay said, Dad, you're not even wearing the mic. So we stopped it and I'm going to show you how what I just went through already. Okay, I put two coats on here. And I take, I take a Darby. This is a uh, Darby here in the United States, out in U uh, Europe, uh, UK, they call it a rod. Same thing, we take it, we true it out. I had an uh, expansion joint, which I completely covered because I know where it's at. What I do is I make my walls true and plumb. This way, it's easier for me to come and hard rubber float it. So, what I do is finish my corners and by the way I am not worried about my knees because I'm wearing some scars pants. These have knee pads in them for guys like me who have sensitive knees. Anyhow, oh this mud is getting stiff. I'm going to switch to my handy dandy square trough. Got more strength, more rigid. And what I was just showing is you can throw your mud in here like this guys or you can just put it in like so. Either way works because we're gonna trim this out. Okay guys, we are going to put some mud on this ceiling, allow that to set a little bit, come back and finish these walls. And yes, if I was using regular cement, I wouldn't even try to go this thick, guys. These soffits, I want to hit them first. Give them a chance to set up. Even with this uh, BMI, it's still got to set just a little bit. And these ceilings are thick. I'm putting this, this one here is about an inch thick. The one on this other side, this is more of a problem. It is easily two inches thick, so we just have to drop out. We'll just leave that one alone for the time being. Now what we're going to do is hit this ceiling or this window trim top. Kind of messy, ain't it? Yeah, handle it. Handle it. Well, I am the pro. I am the pro, but I didn't frame it, man. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, John. Okay, I will handle it, John. Okay. Let me, let me just focus on one thing at a time here, guys. What I do is show you how we do this inner corner. Okay, so see how ugly I've made this corner. The camera, camera can't show that, but here's what I'll do. Take my finger, adjust it. Take a trowel and just pull it off now. And this is a true and plumb corner, just like so. Throw it off, the same thing here. Take my finger. Now these corners are correct. Nothing to it because my Darby or rod will not fit in here. If it could, I would take this, put it inside here, oh, well, it does fit, and trim it out like that also. A lot of ways to do this, guys. Just another way. See? Again, we take it here, trim it out, take it here, trim it out. Now, 
Now we do the top. Not the best example, guys. What we do the best we can with what we got to work with. Okay. We're getting there. Wow. Wow. A little bit of mud, Jay. Gone. Waiting on you, boys. All right. Good mud. Hot day, this stuff sets fast. Kind of, kind of really good mud for this stuff. Anytime we have it where it's so thick and we want it to in here, especially if we're doing the two coat system one day, uh, you definitely want this stiff mud, even though it takes a lot of strength and elbow grease to put it on. Okay, dang it, get up there, guy, stay there. Okay, now what I will do is take my handy dandy rod, pull it this way, pull it that way, that way, that way. That gives me my corner. And I buried up a, a screed in there, expansion joint. No worries, we can handle that. Okay, lastly, finish up a little bit of stuff in here. And then I do this outer corner here, which is a piece of cake, guys. Again, putting this here because I don't want to bend down more than I have to. I'm just going to slam this one out. That's done. Okay. ceiling. Hopefully this won't fall on my head because we are pretty thick on that guy and real hard to go one pass. Okay, last thing I got is this inner corner. Little mud, boys! Well, 
while I'm waiting for some mud, I'll just chew out a couple things. Thank you. I use the heel to get a straighter finish. Now, I'm going to take this piece, I'm kind of jumping all over around here guys, but you get the point. The last thing is just this inset. Again, while I'm waiting for mud, there's always something to do. Mud! I'm almost ready to walk away and start doing these bottoms. Get all the stuff off of here. Do my inside piece of cake. And guys, by the way, it really doesn't matter if you pull it off the top or you pull it off the bottom. I got guys who comment and say, Kirk, you're not a real plaster, you pull it off the bottom. It really doesn't matter, guys. It really doesn't matter the size trial you use. Uh, I prefer a 16 inch. Sometimes I'm using an 18 inch full trial, but all that stuff really doesn't matter, guys. It just depends on the practice and what you're comfortable with. Here, I take it here, boom, here. Take it there, come down, finish that off, and I just about got this. Aside from little petty things, one thing about BMI guys too, and this is real, real important, is you can't mess with this stuff, guys. When it's on, BMI generally, this particular material, I like it for color coats because they are going to color coat this, and. Some other materials you can play with and float. This one you're not supposed to. Uh, you just you put it on. You don't overwork it. Otherwise, you break up the packs. I'm going to finish the tops here. It is ready almost to give it the half hour set. And then I'm going to Darby it, and we'll be done with this guy. OK, guys. Do a lot of things here, pretty busy. I actually got the other side too, and it's sort of drying up on me. Last thing I'm going to do with this 690 is rod it, darby it. I use a two handed darby. Okay, what I'm going to do is pull it up, take it from here, pull it up. And what this does is it straightens everything out, it makes everything true and plumb as you can get it. Just like so. We take it here, right there. This inner detail, we have already got our corners, which are basically templates. There, here. Because this particular product, we don't, we don't play, play with it like, say, um, other Portland-based products. We, we put it on. We darby it, and I'm going to use a steel trowel to do some finishing touches. Down here, one more time, chew and plumb. In fact, you can see it smoking. It's uh, smoking because the walls, the heat is on this wall. I'm going to take this piece here where I buried that expansion screen, give it, give it chew and plumb. And generally what I'll do, guys, is when I'm rodding, I'll go upward strokes. 
say, for example, I'll take this piece here, put it right in that corner, and upward strokes. Here, upward. The last piece right here. And then her to take it all the way around. Then switch it right here. This piece, same thing here. And I'm kind of nervous about this ceiling touching it right now, so I'm going to leave it alone. There's an inch and a half of stucco there, which is no such thing as putting an inch and a half up one shot. But with this BMI, you get about as close as you can to doing it. Now, when you're at this stage right here, guys, and you got everything true and plum and as pretty as you can get it, what you do is you find yourself either, you can let this set for about, say, 20 minutes and come back and steel trowel it just a little bit. All we're doing is getting some of the imperfections out. Or, so this, this particular product, you don't want to use a green sponge float on. You don't want to break up the packs. Basically, you put it on once and leave those packs alone. Now what I'll do is I'll, at the end, say, another half hour. I can lightly hit it with the float, lightly hit it. But we don't want to break up the packs, it's set. Now I find my uh, expansion joint. You know, it's in here somewhere. Uh, let's see, best way to go is from the bottom. Find that expansion joint, take this, go straight up. Allow this to set too, and at least when it's dry, I know where it is. The idea is to get it right in that hole and straight up. We let that set, then we take our trowel on edge, come here, follow that expansion, and just pull it straight up, guys. Takes a little bit of practice for this. And if you notice, I knew that ceiling was gonna be a culprit, but that's okay. We'll come back and put a little bit more in it. And that's how we do it, guys. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this alone because we got other guys on the job and I got the whole rear here to still float out. So I'm gonna do that, but you get an idea of what we're doing here. Okay, guys, we're done with this. I'll show you what it's supposed to look like when we're all troweled down. I had a boxing match with this ceiling here. It kept kicking my ass every time I put it up and fall back down on me, but we got over it. Anyway, this is what it's supposed to look like. We troweled it down, got all the corners true and plumb. All these corners aligned with these corners. And you know, it's a funny thing. I was telling the contractor about this elevator. I said, man, we want to do this before the weekend. Unfortunately, uh, today's Friday. Tonight is uh, Friday night and then Saturday. Somebody already bumped this. You, you figure you do all this detailed corner work and then somebody bumps right into here with a couch, a fridge, a keg of beer, what have you. So we just take a little bit of mud where this big hump is or somebody did what they generally do. So we just fill that out. Now hopefully that'll, that'll work. Right here we went ahead and we scraped out our expansion joint. And last thing I'll show you is our expansion joint here. We took a trowel, scraped it down, cleaned it right up. We think Boss Hog. Anyway, good, baby. we're all done. My name is Kirk. I am with Kirk Giordano Plastering. We thank you guys for watching. And as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one.